Hello everybody, I'm back again. I tried to do a video yesterday before I was heading to work in a little uh, tabletop in a restaurant that they already closed down so I figured, well, maybe I could do a video here, but I tried to do it but it didn't come out right. Two things, uh, there wasn't enough lighting and then at the same time for some reason or something the video came out sideways so I said to myself well um, I might as well just um, uh, when I get home from work early in the morning then I'll do a tutorial better because it's more comfortable here plus there's more lighting and and we're going to continue with this book by um, Steve Miller. I didn't get a chance to show you this book. But anyway, um, we're going to also do some face drawings, heads, and we're going to do... Some stuff that I uh, observed by Proko, um, which, which was pretty cool. It was pretty interesting. All right, so let's get started. First, let me fix this light for a second. So that way we could um, see this much better. I think it's like good like that. All right. <clears throat> Well, at least my cough is clearing up just a little bit. Not that much, but it's getting better. And I'm so happy now with the uh, with my moped that I just recently bought, a scooter. So I get to go to work uh, more earlier, and uh, I get to work faster, too, at the same time, which was it's really awesome. Um, I did rode a moped way 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 back a long time ago a friend of mine his name was israel and uh he lent me his uh moped for just a, like a like a day just to test it out and it was pretty fun but that was when i was like much younger um and plus there wasn't too many cars at that time but today i have to be very very careful because uh, there's so many crazy drivers out there so what i do is um, I used to leave early to work, but now I leave a little late, uh, because, uh, that way I don't have to confront so much traffic and so many crazy drivers out there, because Miami is almost, almost exactly like New York, the, the, uh, overpopulation, a lot of cars, and there's a lot of crazy drivers out there, so they don't follow the rules. So I got to be very, very careful when I'm driving my uh, scooter. But I'm very happy with it because um, uh, going to uh, work on bike wasn't easy. And then taking the bus at the same time, which waiting for a bus was just a joke. Oh, my God, waiting for the bus. Sometimes I even waited like an hour or two hours for a damn bus to come. So I feel much better. Um, the only problem is that the scooters sometimes have trouble turning on, but when I keep turning, turning on the, the scooter, you know, it just automatic, automatically turns on and stuff. So, so it's, it's a, I think I did a very, uh, I think I did a good move buying a scooter because I was going through a lot of bullshit trying to uh, get to work. And not just only that, it just, um, it's more comfortable and, uh, it takes me to work more faster. Okay, enough of that. Let's, let's talk about this book. So this book is uh, by uh, Steve Miller. It's called How to Draw Fantastic Martial Arts Comics. Now, I don't know why they called it hi Ya in the, the front cover, but I guess maybe they wanted to, uh, to show some type of um, special effects or something. Not really sure, but anyway, by Steve Miller. And, of course, Steve Miller did video games and toys and all that, but there was a lot of artists that actually contributed to this book. Let me see if they're, they're here. Um, I'm pretty sure 
Maybe Brett Booth. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was right. There's Brett Booth. He did DC Comics, Marvel. Bill Brent Bronson. This is a different guy. Peter Caravet. Andrew Dollhouse. Another comic book artist. I think he's a comic book colorist. Uh, Steve Hamaker. He's on the other book that I showed you recently. Russell Merritt. Um, he's done stuff for... Um, let me see. I don't know. These are strange names I never heard of, but probably comic books. And here's Steve Miller. And he did all these books. Uh, I used to have this one, Gun Ho, How to Draw Fantastic Military Comics. I might consider ordering that. And Dan Norton. <clears throat> Dan Norton worked for, um, he did X-Men and Batman and D, you know, he worked for DC Comics. And you're going to see uh, Dan Norton, a lot of his sketches here. And uh, there's another book that Dan Norton actually participated in. Uh, he made his own, by the same company, of course, um, How to Draw Creatures and Monsters, which I'll probably show you that on the next segment or probably, in, in, who knows, maybe next week or this week coming we have introduction <clears throat> pretty much like every how to draw book pencils erasers stuff that you need inking equipment pens this is a great way how to do inking water wash it's a different type of inking that the Japanese actually use. Paper and other tools, artist mindset. It's a lot of reading, guys, but, you know, I'm going to try to maybe, if it's not too much, like, for example, um, too much information, then I'll do some stuff for you guys, like tutorials and stuff. Which I'm going to do after this book, which I want to continue with uh, Proco and a little bit of uh, Romero's recent stuff that I've seen by Romero that you guys might like. How to draw the figure. <coughs> Pretty much like I've been showing you guys, everything has to do with the core of the body, you see. You build it up. This is the uh, torso. Notice that the torso is, is sort of like the shape of where the breasts are showing right here, see? And right here is a block shape, but it's more like a woman's shape at the same time. Here's a more accurate pose and at the same time form of method and technique. step by step right here just pretty much I've been showing you guys one two three parts of the body that's how you start doing the figure pressure points joints like a skeleton primary drawings block shapes the mannequin and the drawing at the same time so this is more like the cube and block shape figure and then the mannequin at the same time so it tells you right here this whole process here is the same process that you see here picture your figure drawing like a sort of like a micronaut action toy figure you know you can see the joints here another thing that i've um saw on google which i'm going to show you which i think i showed you this before 
that is sort of like a mannequin, but at the same time, like a toy figure. So let me give you a better demonstration here. I'll do it in black pencil. So you, this is just a quick demonstration. So here's the upper part torso. It's sort of like a toy mannequin method. Most artists actually use stuff like this. And I think I showed you by the book by, um, had a whole bunch of different artists, which was called Cartooning and Comics. And it had a lot of drawings by um, Steve Rude and um, I forgot this guy's name. Oh yeah, Neil Adams. And yeah, it's sort, of, it's sort of like a toy mannequin that you see and then you do the legs coming out like that. Now, the one I saw in Google, it's a little bit different, which I'm going to show you right now. And let's get uh, something else here that might give you a better demonstration here. I'm going to do my demonstration is a little bit different here so you start outlining the figure like that it's always good to try something new something different and then right here also The only thing with this is that I can't erase this because it's sort of like markers. But it's just I'm giving you an idea, you know, how this is done. There, see? That's the same thing like this, except that this you can see is more like a, a round pelvic shape. But you could do it like this also if you want. All right, so let's go on with the next page. Here we have uh, foreshortening, and foreshortening is very, very important. You can see the hand coming at us. It's coming right at the viewer's eye. This foreshortening, remember there's two types of foreshortening. The foreshortening of, of the arm going back and the foreshortening of the hand, the arm coming forward, like over here, you see? And then over here too, see? So this arm is going back, and then there's foreshortening here on the leg, and then it's foreshortening going back here. So I've shown you guys many times that when you're doing foreshortening, um, you're actually, you know, I'm gonna do half of the body here, so. This is the torso, this is the pelvic shape, And what you're going to do is you train your eye to see the front part of the kneecap right there. See, you train your eye and <clears throat> do like, a, if you look at this, this is sort of like a kind of like one of those pins that you see in the bowling alley. That's what it looks like. Or like maybe an upside down bottle like this. You see, that's what that is. And then you go the leg down. 
and this leg you train your eye to see the kneecap here but this time it's going to be smaller because it's foreshortening going back this one what we're going to do is you do the shape like that and then this one before shortening back like this then the hand the arm usually start all the time with the front always train your eye to see the first part that comes at you which is the hand coming at us so that's what you got to do and then you work your way back to the shoulders this arm always start from this and this and to the outside for example to the end of the arm so the end of the arm would be over here that would be for shortening and perspective at the same time and we do the hand right there and we'll do the head so that's how it's done that's what you actually that's how you do foreshortening but you have to train your eye to see where the kneecap is the other kneecap goes back and the hand the arms and all that okay here we have the head and the face now i don't usually work like this but i usually like to use the lumith method but if you want i can show you how this is done let's go do right here because I don't want to waste too much paper so this is the way I would probably do this a circle I'm gonna see if the camera could get this yes okay good vertical line for the center of the face and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, indicate the nose right here the eyes right here and this will be my chin. So simply, I visualize the mouth line should be around here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape it like an egg shape. Now pay attention. <clears throat> because pretty much like I've shown you that you have to slice a little bit of the head. So that's what we're going to do. But before we do that, what I want to do is and I'm going to do it differently. And maybe he did it this way. I really, because I, I'm sort of like estimating and trying to imagine that he did it like this. So I would do the nose. Right here would be my eyes. Three eyes length. Like that. So I go back to the illustration here and what I see is sliced then he slices over here okay so the first thing you do is outline the shape make it look like an egg shape work with the nose which is a triangle and then you start slicing which you actually see it right here see And then right here also. And then all you have to do is go down and work. See the difference over here? These are planes. And it says right here, the planes, the eye sockets, the structure of the eye sock, the eye sockets. So that's the same thing you could do with this. You could start making the planes for the forehead, like you see over here, and then the cheek lines over here. But these are all planes. Remember, all this is all planes. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do sort of like a the planes or diamond shape. You could do this also like this. That actually helps out. Or you could just do the planes from where the cheek lines are 
the cheekbones, like this. And uh, I think uh, I kind of messed up over here. I should have made the eye a little bit. Yeah, right there. Yeah, I just got to make sure that the proportions are correct. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there's always going to be a mistake, but do not panic. If you panic, you're never going to get nothing right. So you always have to practice, because practice makes perfect. And then you notice that pretty much I explained, you could do sort of like a U shape or a circle or a block shape to do that part of the chin. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do like a U shape. And it comes in like that. This kind of reminds me a little bit of the Riley, which I keep forgetting his name, Riley Method. And there's a lot of uh, tutorials that I've seen. And recently I've seen one by Riley, which is pretty good by some artist called Salomon or something. Uh, he's a very good artist. He could draw some really cool faces. I think he's from the Middle East. I'm not really sure. Or he, I think he could be from Israel. But he's a good, good artist. Uh, you should check him out. Um, I might consider... Um, the problem is that some of his videos and his um, techniques is a little bit complicating. But maybe you guys might know who I'm talking about. Solomon something. But I should um, look after every type of method there is. Okay, so you have an idea how you do this. And the same thing applies with the uh, profile. Except that this is done a little bit different here. So, Okay, so let's continue. Here we have more faces and heads. And of course, this is a different type of head. This is nothing like, um, I would say pretty much what we've been reviewing by Serpino or this is more like geometrical shapes. It's like if you take out a figure, the head of a figure of a mannequin, and then you see a lot of planes here. You can tell that the planes are very, very different here, you see. This is almost like the Loomis method, but you gotta be careful when you do this one. I could try to do this one for you, but let me see if I could. Let's, let's give it a shot. You never know. So I would probably do it like this. Um, like this. Use that geometrical method. That is sort of like a beach ball method. So that's why a lot of people consider it the geometrical method, but it's sort of like a beach ball, and Andrew Loomis actually uses it all the time. It's like one curve line here, then another curve line here, then right here would be the uh, vertical line for the front of the face. And let me get my magic pencil eraser. And then I'll just do vertical line like this. I think I might have it right. And then we'll do another grid curve line here. <clears throat> and this will be right here, the chin. So what he does is, like, sort of like Loomis would do it. But first, what I would do, let me figure this one out. Because let's go back to the next, the, the first page we studied. You can tell he started the features first. Then he worked with the grid lines with the planes and all that. So that's what we're going to do with this one. So we'll do the nose. The nose is always the first focal point. What makes the face, the eyes. And then the mouth right there. So we have the chin there. So what we got to do now is, uh, let me sharpen this for a second. Hold on. So all we got to do now is just, now we have pretty much, we mapped out the face, how it looks like. 
and then what we're going to do is we're going to start doing the planes right here would be the contour of the face right here now i don't know if this is going to come out right but it might let's see let's see what happens and right here this will be the, the plane of the forehead and now i could just go back like that sort of like if I'm doing a block shape for the whole head and I'm gonna slice over here for where the jaw is gonna be at and the ear line is gonna be at so since we're doing that we're gonna do the oval for the ears and right here would be the jaw right there see Of course, something here does not look right. And I think I know what it is. What happened was that, yeah, I should have made the eye a little bit lower, just like the Loomis method, lower underneath the horizontal line right here, which that's gonna be the eyebrow line. So yeah, so doesn't matter. I could always uh, fix it. And then you see that U shape for the chin, just like he did here. And then we add a little bit more roundness back right here, this thing here. So I'm not gonna do any more details on this because I'm just giving you the idea how this is done. So you guys could practice this. Remember guys, everything that I'm doing for you guys the demonstrations, the videos, I want you to practice. Just don't watch what I'm doing. I want you to practice. I want you to just get those, you know, papers and pencils and practice, okay? Because I want to see if what I'm doing is helping you guys out. You know what I mean? I want you to practice. Don't just look at my videos. All right, so here we have uh, a different form of way of doing it. And I've seen this done by um, this other artist. His name is, um, oh man, yeah, Bart Sears. Bart Sears worked like this. And I've shown you a book by Bart Sears, which is called Power Comics. And I'm pretty sure you guys have seen it. And you can also check on my, um, on my library. You will find it by Bart Sears. And uh, you very simple. It's sort of like you see the image of a box shape for the torso and the hip area. Then you just transform it into a underwear shape, you see? So remember that I've shown you guys how to do the Ed Foychuk method, how to draw the figure. So Ed Foychuk, you know, he uses sort of like a um, an oval and he does a grid line like this and then here's the this is the front view and the grid line like this now the reason why he does that because it gives direction to your to the pelvic so so what Ed Foychuk does he does sort of like an underwear method like that see and then this is the front view this will be more to the front like that this part is going this way and it's a sign of perspective okay so that's what this is over here if you want you can, do the, you can see the grid line right there see so that's what he's doing now let's look at this this is of course he made it a little bit different of course uh what he did was he did, probably did the circle the circles and then he did the you know the lines so my greatest guess, uh, this artist party, which I think is uh, Brett Booth that did this. Here's the torso right here. Connecting to the hip area. And then here's the balance line. And here's the joints. See that, that. Here's the balance line for the the shoulder and the joints for the shoulder over here. And I keep forgetting what is the name of this. If anybody's looking at this, please help me. I keep forgetting the name of this part of the bone. 
which sometimes I remember, but sometimes I forget. So that's this over here is this whole process here. And then all you have to do is do sort of like the outline of the shape of the pelvic, which is the, sort of like an underwear, see? Like if you were doing an underwear, but sort of like connecting it. That's what you're doing here, see? And the grid line actually helps out a lot because it's giving you a three-dimensional way of looking at your figure, right? That's it, very simple, guys. And let's do this flat so you can understand it more better. So we'll do it flat. Maybe it's more easier, but you gotta practice to draw perspective also. Don't just draw flat all the time. But if I do it flat, maybe you guys understand it a little bit better. See, the same process I did. And hit. Okay, so all you have to do is do the core of the body. But when you're doing the core of the body, connect it. And this will be the underwear shape. Like that, see? And I know this doesn't look so good, but this is just a, a quick rough sketch that I'm doing that you guys could understand. And the same process here that I'm doing here is the same process that you see over here. Okay, let's go on to the next page. Here we have some real cool muscles here. And like I said, remember, when you're doing muscles, when you're working with your figure, start from the basic, from the top muscle right here, which is the chest area, you know? So let me give you uh, another way of doing this because you can do it this way also. Say you're doing the chest first. Here are the, the shoulders. Right? Let's see if you can see this. Yeah, I guess you could see this. All right, and then this is the head right here. I usually do like a socket for the neck and then I do the head. Sometimes. It's the grid. And this is the chest line right here, okay? So, if you want, you could start like this. It's like if you were doing the first top process and forming the muscle, like this. Like this. Then, all you have to do, just like you see in the drawing, you start doing ovals, ellipses, on the arms, like that. So let me do this in marker so you can see what I just did, see? Like this. Okay. And after that, you do the rest. And here, this pen is running out. Hold on. Give me a minute, guys. Hold on. Something else here. Darker pen. Yeah, here's one. These are markers, but I don't think these are not the colors that I was looking for. But I, they were really cheap. They were like a dollar in a dollar store. So they, for now, they're pretty good. It works out pretty fine, I guess. And this one, you're connecting and making it into a underwear shape. 
All right. Okay, so it's not so hard, you know, it's just everything has to do with observing, observing, you know, the, how you're doing the whole figure. Yeah. Just like that, see? Okay, so let's close this. Otherwise the ink will dry up. Okay, so let's actually study this now. Now this one, uh, you can tell has a balance line and that's what they're talking about, the balance line here. It says it right here. Um, the curve and yeah, the spinal cord and all that. You see the balance line here? There's a balance line here, and there's another balance line right here. And it gives direction to the pose that you want. There's a balance line here, there's a balance line here, and a balance line here. So you could do it um, pretty much like this. The gesture center work with the shapes. That. Like that. Then after that, what you gotta do is start doing pretty much like you see here, details, a socket. Here are curved shapes for the breast. Then you connect it here, do a small waistline here. And then after that, you're doing the hip to the grid line. It's always important to do the grid line, the socket. And then you have the underwear shape at the same time. This would be the collarbone, I think. I think I know it. I think that's the name of it, the collarbone. And the same thing like you see there. Or you could simply do it pretty much like most artists would do something like this. They'll do like a T shape first. Then they do a hint of a torso. Then they do the balance line. Okay. Practice doing the T shape. The T shape actually helps out a lot. Torso. Then you do the balance line and then you do the hip. An oval for the hip. And you can do the same process as you see over here. So that's what this is. Everything has to do with balance line. You can see there's a lot of balance line here. They don't show it too much over here, but you have an idea pretty much how these poses work. This is a really cool sketch right here. And I think this is made by Brett Booth because he draws like this. <clears throat> Arms and legs. This is really fascinating right here. Really cool stuff. And hands. And hands are, you know, pretty much like shapes. Uh, the same thing with the fingers. But this is a good way of doing hands. It's sort of like if you were doing a glove method. So if you want, you can practice, you know, doing stuff like, like if you see a glove, but you start with the first the palm of the hand, of course. And then you start in the shape like that. And this would be the thumb here. And then once you have this, all you have to do is start visualizing, train your eye to see the shape of this part of the hand right here, see? Let's see. Oh, I could draw on my hand. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, you see what the shape that I'm doing now here on my hand? Well, that's exactly what you're seeing here. So let's do this a little bigger here. Let's do this bigger. Let's do it in pencil first. Then we'll do it in black pencil. That way you guys understand what I'm showing here. 
Sometimes you can use the cross also. <coughs> Excuse me. This would be the size of where the fingers are. And over here, we could start doing an oval shape here. And little by little, you visualize, here's the wrist right here. You visualize the thumb I try to make it bigger than this whole thing here. Like that. And then where the fingers are, you just do more lines like this, or if you want, you can spread the lines, whatever. And you see parts of the cylinders of the fingers right there. So you start in the circle, the cross, the glove shape. Make sure it stands out. Then you can do more details. And do the cylinders. You can line for the center. Cylinders, cylinders. Remember that the finger has like three cylinders. Just picture it as three spirals. Down here, what we hear on the other finger. Of course, this finger is a little bit bigger. This one goes a little further out. Because when you look at your fingers, they're not the same size, you know, the same. So you're looking at, try to picture and train your eye to see a glove shape on your whole hand. Now I show you several ways how to do hands, but this is another way in doing hands by using the glove method. It actually works out, trust me. Everything works out. Everything that I'm showing works out. Because you just, all, you as an artist, you just have to practice it. That's all you got to do. All right. Right here, we have uh, drawing the fist. If you want to draw the fist, um, you do an oval for the fist. Then what you're going to do is you're going to do the shapes of where the fingers are going at. So like this, something like that, see? <clears throat> but be careful with this. You want to make sure there's one, two, three, four, and five would be here, the other finger. So all you have to do, usually when you look at your fist and you're looking at this, just like the length of the fingers is the length of the knuckles also. So you might want to start the knuckle first then work your way down with the other knuckle and then the other knuckle and this knuckle further down and then you do like tubes or cylinder shapes to do the fingers then bring this hand this way and right there you have a fist He's ready to punch you. Now always remember the three dimensional. Oh, because the bottom of the fingers right here, right here, the bottom part. So I don't know if this came out pretty good, but it's just a quick rough sketch I'm doing for you guys so you can figure out how to do the hands. And remember, you'll be able to do, once you do these shapes, you do the knuckles, you'll do the shapes. Like this one would be easy. So let me give you an idea how this one's done. Oh, my foot is asleep. Oof. I have my foot crossed the other leg, so it's just like, oh, 
fell asleep. All right, this one would be something like this. Like, you know, you just um, do the shape of the hand. This is the other side of the hand. And um, here's the knuckle. <clears throat> and the other knuckle here. You know, train your eye to see the shapes of the knuckles and the forms, you know. It's not just only drawing. You have to train your eye. You have to visualize all this. Otherwise, it's not going to come out right. I myself, I definitely need a lot of practice with hands. Because hands, I could do it. It's just, you know, I don't really like to draw hands all the time. I'm going to be perfectly honest. You know, every artist sometimes say, <clears throat> oh, I don't want to draw the hands. But the hands is part of the, the whole scene. Like if you're doing comic strips and action poses and all that stuff, you need to learn how to draw hands. So the hands is very, very important. Again, you can do the glove shape, figure out what the length of the hand is, and then just do more details. That's it. Do the fingers. That's all you got to do. Here, you can tell it's the same process, except that you have grid lines going this way. <coughs> Let me show you this one. Um, Okay, this is um pretty much like I've been showing you guys. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start working with the joints. Like that. And then you do grid lines. To do the length of the fingers. So that's what this is right here, see? Okay, so let's uh, skip the hands for now because it takes a lot to learn and it's a lot of practice doing hands. Here we have the skeletal part of the fingers right here, see? They're giving you an idea how to do the fingers and the uh, hands uh, when they're all broken into parts. When the hand is closing like this, you can see the different shapes. That that's, that's what this is over here, see? A shape, a shape here, a shape here. So, you know, if I were you guys, um, practice with your own hands. Because that's how you're going to get good when you're, when you're drawing your own hands. And it really doesn't matter if you're drawing a comic book character and you're expressing something with his hand, then just do it from your hand. That's it. There's also uh, that you guys can get, but I don't know if that's going to work out. I think it does work. It's called the mannequin hand. You can find that in any art store. So the mannequin hand, actually, you can pose the hand any way you want, and you can draw the hand any pose like this or like that, like this, you know. Okay, here we have the foot. As you can see, the foot also has its uh, rules with uh, shapes. It's the same thing. This is the bottom of the foot right here. This foot is right here, this foot here. This is actually, you're looking down at the foot and this is, you're looking the bottom of the foot. I think that's what that is. And the same thing over here, you're looking the bottom of the foot and this is how you draw a foot kneeling down, actually tipping, like tippy toes. You can see the directions of the bones of the foot, which is, is pretty neat right here. And of course, this is a little bit exaggerated. This is not done right, but it's just a quick sketch. So let me show you how the, how, and sometimes I actually hate drawing feet, but I definitely need to learn how to draw feet. So um, what I would probably do is I'll, I'll do an image of a foot very carefully, you know, do an image. I, I would start with the base, the bottom part first. Then I work with my, just visualize the shape of the top of the foot. And then use grid lines at the same time. See, like that. Pretty much is something like that. 
Now, I don't know if this came out good, but anyway, it's just a quick demonstration. Something like that. Some people actually use this type of method. They, uh, and I've seen this done a lot. Uh, Marvel actually does, you know, stuff like this. They visualize the heel right here, and that's how they do the foot. But that's very tricky. That's a lot of practicing. I'm going to go through all my books and gonna, I'm going to find the most easiest way because I know every book I have uh, shows you a better understanding how to draw feet. But I'm going to find the best one there is. And what we're going to do is we're going to work on feet uh, because feet are very important. Here we have capturing the gesture. And I've shown you already how to do the balance line. You can see the perspective, you see? The perspective and you see the curve. And you see the torso and the hip area right here, see? So it's giving you an idea. You start with the curve, and then you start doing the rest, the torso and the hip area. Here's the gesture right here, the balance line, and the limbs. So all you have to do is make sure if you guys get this book, Review this first before you get started with this. This will be here. You can tell that he did a straight gesture line here for the foot. Uh, and then he worked with the body. You see? So he did a line first here. And then after that, he did the rest of the body. Let me turn off the uh, air conditioning for a second. Okay, so you have an idea pretty much about gesture. It says right here, fleshing out the matchstick men. This one, thinking through the action. Okay. Gesture. Oh, excuse me, guys. This is a gesture. Gesture. Mannequin. Finished drawing. Uniforms and costumes. And that's very important when you're doing character design. And that's what this is, character design, when you're actually doing the uniform and costumes. Why is it that the air conditioning is still on? Oh, oh it turned off. Good. Okay, here we have a samurai. Um, basic uniforms. And of course, this all has to do with Japanese and martial arts. It's pretty neat, I like this. <clears throat> folds and wrinkles, how to draw folds. This is very important also when you're doing character design and you're doing clothes, it's always important to learn how to draw the crease, the, you know, the wrinkle parts of the pants. That's very, very important to them. Here's a great pose right here. Fantastic. Look at the details on this. This is really cool right here. Awesome. Weapons of power. Swords. You can see the mannequin right here. He doesn't really use sometimes the um, the gestures. He use sort of like a mannequin form in order to get to this point, to this point, to this point. Pretty much like I've been showing you guys how to do a sword. You start from the center and then you shape it. The 
samurai weapons. <clears throat> Let me get some of my drink, guys. My voice is like Drink something healthy. All right. Okay, so when you're drawing figures, you always got to remember how to draw the swords right in their hands, you know. Because some people, and sometimes I have trouble doing that, drawing, you know, uh, figures holding weapons. And that's definitely a must. You must learn how to learn how to draw figures holding weapons. Here we have more weapons here. And these are different types of Japanese weapons. Here we have kendo swords and armor. Heavy bow, iron fan, tamfa. Let me see what else we have here. These are all types of weapons. Chinese battlefly knives. Chinese saber knives. Climbing claws. Throwing stars. So they're giving you an idea of pretty much what this is all about. Packing a punch this is something that Bruce Lee says. Hitting does not mean pushing. True hitting can be likened to the snap of a whip. All the energy is slowly concentrated and then suddenly released with tremendous outpouring of power. Yeah, that's true. Um, I've seen because I've I've taken martial arts a long, long time ago, <clears throat> way back, uh, and I also have videotapes on martial arts because it, you know I love martial arts. It's fascinating. I'm not a professional in martial arts, but I do know some things. But they say that actually, when you're, it's like you're training yourself. You're seeing yourself before the action starts. And sometimes they start slowly, you know, they practice by starting slowly and then they, when the time comes, then they attack their opponent real quick. <clears throat> so they're actually, that's what they're, excuse me, that's what they're actually explaining when it comes to uh, drawing figures also. This is pretty cool, I like this, awesome. Blockbusters, the superhuman brawlers. 
You can tell the foreshortening over here is sort of like a cylinder shape right there. Kick in up and notch. The front kick. Pretty cool. Here's the balance line again, right here. The back kick. And the side kick, which is really cool. I like this. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, and then we have the jumping side kick, which is really cool. This is the uh, balance line. The gesture and the balance line right here. You can tell that the drawing is a little bit exaggerated. To the legs are too long on this. I don't know who's the artist on this, but I I don't think it's Brett Booth. Can't be Brett Booth because Brett Booth doesn't draw like this. This is more like Brett Booth right here. But this is someone else. I don't know who it is. It doesn't tell me. But anyway. Wait a minute for a second. Hold on. Because some of these drawings are different. No, it doesn't tell you. No. All right. Great drawing right here, sword kick. Fantastic stuff here. Upside down kick. <clears throat> Good guys wear black belts. This would be more like, I would say, Robert Marzullo would do stuff like this. Another way of doing this, which it would be something like this. Let me give you an idea how to do this one. Because I like to practice. So another way of doing this would be more like... And I'm going to do it just a little flat so that way you guys understand this. This would be the balance line. Then you do the pelvic. This. And that's when you do the joints right here, see? This leg goes out this way. And this leg goes out this way. easier to understand. What am I doing? Hold on. Alright, this one. Balance, the uh, gesture line. Balance line. And over for the torso. Balance line. And then you shape the pelvic shape. Sort of like a diamond shape. That's what we're seeing right here. And then you start doing joints coming out like this. Let's do this correct. Because it seems a little bit too high, the shoulders. So the head would be a little higher. There you go. See? And all you gotta do is simply start working with the anatomy afterwards. You can, you don't really have to use too much the, uh, the geometrical shapes or the mannequin. You just simply do 
the outline. That's all we got to do. The rest will start taking shape. They're just giving you an idea how to do it. That's all. It doesn't have to be this way. All right, so here we have the uh, African-American martial arts hero. Pretty cool with a big afro and everything. Awesome. I like the costume design. It's really cool. Pretty creative. Let me see who it is for a second. Let me see. So we have here the Mulan. I don't know who that is, but anyway. This one is the Shulian Monks. Pretty neat. The superhero martial artist. The big and the bad and the ugly. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Is there another way of doing the mannequin right there? <coughs> pretty neat, neat stuff, guys. Pretty neat. Yeah, it works, it works. The Flammaboyt Villains. I love this. This is really cool. I like the way he did that. Again, I don't know who the artist did this, but I'm pretty sure this looks more like a Brett Booth drawing. Pretty neat. Really cool stuff. Sumo wrestlers. faster because I want to do some tutorials with you guys here's another way of doing this you can do it like this draw the waist and then do the legs but notice that the joints are coming out more because of the hip she's got big hips <clears throat> i think i kind of messed up here so let me just fix this here hold on bear with me we all make mistakes that's how we learn, by making mistakes. So you can do it that way. You start off with the core. Then you work with the balance line, but make sure that the joints are a little bit outward because it's gonna be, she's gonna have big hips. So all we have to do is draw her hips. <clears throat> Let's make this a little bit more simpler to understand if we have to get, maybe we'll do it over here, let me see, hold on a second. And I guess that since he made 
the sh the hip area small. I think that's why he did it that way. He did the joints coming out more to make it, you know, the hips stand out more. I think that's the way. But it works because it actually follows the um, the nature of things, especially when it comes to figure drawing. That's the way he did it. Make it darker so you guys can see. Right here. And then let's use this pen to do the outline of the body. And the crotch areas, you could do, remember, the grid line in order to find that crotch. And voila, you have, I wouldn't say a perfect anatomy because I'm doing this in green inky inky. So... There you go. Very simple, guys. Okay. So this is a different approach. So if you guys like this approach, then try to go back on the video and look at the way I started, how I did this one. But I noticed that he does his figure drawing. I don't know if it's Brett Booth. I think it's Brett Booth. He does it so many ways. You can see the balance line right there. Let me get my uh, clear ruler over here. There's a balance line right there. And there's a balance line right there, see? So I like the way he did this whole drawing. So notice he doesn't use any lines on this. So what he does is he does something like this. Let me see if I can show you this one. So I want to make sure you guys understand this book in case you guys get it. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Wait, wait, the back is showing too much. So, I've got to make sure that this... All right, where is some paper? I need some paper here. All right. So... This would be gesture, and this would be balance line right here. See, this would be the top, and then right here would be the hip area right there. And then what we want to do is the shape. That's what he's actually showing us here. Shape of the body there and, and right there and here's a shoulder. That's it guys, I see. <coughs> So you can start this way, the T method, an oval for the torso, the balance line, an oval for the hip area, and at the same time you're doing the bikini or the underwear technique that you see over here, you see? So then, instead of making the, if you want, you could do the lines, but you can simply just visualize the form of the leg, just like Romero would do it. Now I'm gonna do a different pose, like that, see? And this leg's going this way. Last. 
See? So that's pretty much what you see over here. So you don't really have to do the lines for the legs or you do just visualize it kind of like uh, David Finch would do. David Finch would just do a, a little dot there and then he'd start doing the shape. And I've seen the way David Finch does his figures. See that? So this really works. So you don't have to do the... the limb, you know, lines for the limbs and stuff. And right here would be the breast. Okay, so you have an idea how this is done. Okay, so here we have the Fight Club. Pretty cool drawing. I like the way he did the curve on this. Awesome. And one thing for sure, guys, you know, I've seen a lot of mistakes by some several artists and friends of mine that they draw the women um, too flat and they don't draw them with, you know, good looking hips. You've got to make your women look beautiful, man. you got to give it nice shapes. Even though if it's a superhero woman, you still got to make them look really good. Like she's a woman. Here's another way of doing foreshortening. That's a good way of doing foreshortening too. Great action scene right there. Fights with weapons. Pretty cool, I like this. This is what you call for shortening in perspective, you see? This arm, even though this is a big dude, but you can see that it's coming at us. And you can see there's a lot of movement here, for example, and composition. So not only you're seeing for shortening, but you're seeing composition that this guy, is, there's a lot of foreshortening with this guy here and there's the back side here, the background. So this arm is going back and this arm is coming forward at us. You can see foreshortening over here and foreshortening over here also. So it's pretty cool. I like the way he did this whole composition here. Let me see how he did this process. Yeah, sort of like a mannequin thing that he does. All right, guys, I, I, <clears throat> I'm just going to keep turning the pages a little bit quicker because I want to do another video after this, which is, has to do with uh, a little bit of everybody here. So hopefully you guys understand what I've been showing you guys. And uh, this is a very book, good book. It's called uh, How to Draw Fantastic Martial Arts Comics by Steve Miller. And I rate this book because I'm always rating a book after another book. I rate it a nine because it's a great book. And not just only that, it's got a lot of comic book artists that actually contributed to this book. So it's, you won't um, be sorry with this one. All right, good luck, guys. Thank you for watching.